Welcome to Kids Break. Thank you for joining me. You'll notice that I have some equipment here. On this side, I have a fan that I have made, a homemade fan out of Tinker Toys. If you boys and girls talk to your grandmas and grandpas, maybe your great grandmas and grandpas, they might just remember playing with Tinker Toys. I used to build all kinds of things with, with these Tinker Toys. I would follow directions and I could be, build buildings and other things that, that worked. Um, I came up with this out of my own, my own head. And you'll also see something that is right next to it. What do you think this is? This is a small steam engine, an engine that works on steam. When your great, 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 great grandma and grandpa were little, steam engines were used for many, many things. They were used to, in railroad trains, in locomotives, in ships that went across the ocean, for farm machinery, factories, and sawmills. My mom and dad gave this little steam engine to me when I was a child, and I had so much fun with it. I don't even know if you could buy something like that. And this is how it works. I'm going to, I'm going to screw off this whistle, and I'm going to fill it with water. I gotta make sure that it's not over full, but we'll pour a little bit in, and I have a water gauge right on the front here. Oh, it's, al it's almost full, so I won't have to add so much. I don't wanna add too much, or it might be over full. There we go. All right, this water gauge tells me how much is in the boiler. And the boiler is this part of the steam engine. I'm gonna screw this whistle back on. Now, what will happen is that I will now plug the, the uh, heater in. Now, in the, in the olden days, people would have to put a really hot fire underneath the steam and underneath the boiler, which would make the water hot, and then the water would turn to steam. Maybe you've seen your mom or dad cooking potatoes and this, it looks like a white smoke coming out. That's probably steam from the, the water that's turning from water to steam. This is going to be starting to, this will start to heat up and the water will boil in here and steam will start to be collected in this part of the boiler. Once it gets really hot, I will be able to make the steam go from the boiler, I'll turn this, this lever and it will go down into the piston. And the piston, uh, the steam will push the piston one way and push it back Perhaps you've heard of trains being called choo-choo trains. That's where that comes from. Choo, 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 choo. It's far more complex than what I'm explaining. But I see it's starting to bubble now. Let's see if, not yet, it's not ready to, uh, to be used. But what, what, what will happen is that once I'm able to uh, get the steam high enough, I will hook up my fan here and we will be able to watch my steam engine pull that fan around. No, it's not there yet. This is very hot, so I have to be careful not to touch it. And that's probably why you can't buy these things very much anymore. Now you'll notice that there's another little, there's another little uh, button here and that's called a safety valve. And if there gets too much steam, in the, uh, yeah, it's starting to get warm. If there's too much steam in the boiler, this safety valve will lift up and let extra steam go out. Otherwise, the boiler might explode and I don't, I don't want that to happen. I don't know why it's bubbling here. There must be some leaks. 
that I didn't know about. But I tried it at home and it worked. So we just have to wait a little bit. Maybe you've gone to an old, uh, like a, a farm show and they had a steam engine. Maybe it was on a tractor connected to a thrashing machine. And they were making the, uh, they were putting grain through the thrashing machine and separating the kernels of, of grain from all the other uh, stems and stalks and doing it that way so that they could bring that to market. No, we, I guess we still have to wait a little bit more. Uh, now, of course, big engines would have big boilers, huge boilers. And their, and their pistons would be a lot, a lot stronger and bigger because they had big loads to pull. And I just have one little wheel and it's not probably the strongest. Uh, yeah, it's still getting hottest. It's not the strongest. So I might have to help it move along a little bit. And I'm going to put this funnel on the exhaust. And if we listen very carefully, we might be able to hear the of the steam engine. No, not yet. Well, what else can we talk about? Um, my mom, I remember my mom telling me that, that she, when she grew up, she would sit on the edge of a tractor that had a steam engine and she would feel the chugga, 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 chugga of the steam engine. Oh, I hear it's, it's cooking. So we're getting closer. Yep, we're getting closer. Takes a little bit to get going. Uh, in my mom's, when my mom was a little girl, uh, farmers would bring a big tractor with a steam engine on it, and then they would go from farm to farm and help the other farmers thrash out their grain. It's bubbling more. Sometimes when we have to wait, it takes even longer, it seems, doesn't it? Steam engines were really slow and they were really huge to, to move around. And after a little while, people stopped using steam engines because they were so big, they started to use tractors for, uh, for making the thrashing machines run. All right. Yeah. Will it ever come? Will it ever get hot enough? Something is going on. I can see bubbles. I don't know if you can see bubbles. Seems like it's boiling in there. Oh, I hear it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna blow the whistle here. And then you'll that that'll be the signal that we can turn the uh, turn the uh, valve to get it to the other side. All right. So that means that there's there's steam in the boiler. All right. I'm gonna turn this, and we're gonna let we're gonna let the steam go into the. There we go. It can really go fast if I let more steam in. Whoa, it can slow down a little bit. I'm going to, uh, can you hear the chug? All right, I'm going to stop it and I'm going to put on the belt or this string. Gotta be careful so I don't burn myself because this is really hot. All right, I'll put that on. All right. Here we go. Let's give it a try. You might just wonder, what does this have to do with God? Since most of the time we, we talk about God when we're doing these kind of things. Well, a couple of things I thought of that God had to give the men who, not to design this, but who designed the first steam engines, the brains, how to do that. Thinking that we could take steam 
and use it to run machinery. But then another thing came to me that God has put into nature some laws that don't change, just like he doesn't change. And one of those is that water, when you put heat under it, will boil and that steam will be produced. And because that does not change, then something like this can work. So God's law, God's laws in nature are faithful because we know he is faithful and he can be trusted no matter what. Thank you for joining me. It was fun to show you my steam engine. <laughs>